Welcome back once again. This is Everyone Loves Pirates, and we are doing our Let's Play Let's Learn of Crusader Kings 2. And as we left off last episode, and I am recording again back to back because I just have to know what happens. I can't I can't leave it here. We got attacked by our vassal, our brother, who wanted the title of Duke from us. He wanted to take our petty king title. Same thing. Um, the screen's changed a little bit just because my hotkey is Shift F1 to start recording, so it just pops up F1 every time. But let's go back to military, and let's look at the mercenaries we were going to hire. And what do we end up with? The Saxon Band, right? Because it had more heavy infantry, less light infantry. I think I said more in the last video. Um, but it has some pikemen. It has a lot more archers. I like this one. This is the stronger even though it costs the same. This is one that's going to do better for us, I believe. Nice thing about hiring mercenaries is they fight with their leaders as well. So we can check. Usually they have really good leaders. Sometimes they don't, but we can check. He's a 9. Some of the other guys on his flanks might be even better. Uh, I mean, it's hard to see exactly who uh, those might be. Probably that guy. 14. Aggressive leader. So we'll get some better leaders out of it as well, because right now um, we do need someone leading our troops, but the best we can do is this 10 guy here, um, which is not good. And if we weren't getting mercenaries, this is where I'd probably check the realm again and see if I could get someone in my court that was a better military man. But for now, we are wondering where these... I, I actually don't know where these mercenaries are going to show up. Now it says they will arrive in or near Dublin. We want these. They shouldn't arrive where there are hostile troops. Hopefully they arrive in Oriel so I can get my guys to them quickly. Because he'll, he'll attack them immediately because they start with no morale. Uh, otherwise, I just don't want them to be landlocked. I want to be able to get... Get them, get to them quickly with my troops, and at least bump that morale up to a quarter, because we're going to be half morale coming off these boats. Okay, cross your fingers. Let's go. All right, Oriole, perfect. Just what I wanted. Hopefully, he'll stay there and keep sieging. I'm going to slow this down to two times, just in case. It's not bad when it's just a small area, but sometimes uh, when you have a large realm, and you have the speed going fast, especially when the counties are really large. So like when I was playing over in Sweden uh, off camera before I started recording episodes, you know, I could be like here in Jarnbarn land or here in Varmland and be at this view looking at these lands and sieging stuff here and never see the army that's over here. One, because maybe I have this open or something, but also because they'll, they'll be either in the middle of the county or when they like walk, sometimes they'll like be at the opposite edge. He'll be over here with the walking animation to come over here. And he just, there's no counties in between. When he's done here, he'll pop up here. And, you know, I don't even notice because he's just barely off screen. So because of that, um, I like to keep it at a slow speed and just not get surprised by stuff. And then, you know, occasionally, you know, move around or zoom out just to make sure. Um, that I don't get screwed. But we have plenty of people here. We will combine our armies. Uh, first, if we want, we can just look at their army. These are the leaders they have. We can't change them. He's Craven. Good job. Put a Craven guy in. This guy has no specific modifiers. This guy's uh, 20. He's, he's great. He's good with heavy troops. That's your heavy infantry. Uh, and they have a lot of heavy infantry. So that's very good. Unfortunately, it's equally split across all their troops. But, hey, whatever. We will combine... Merge the units. We can reorganize to an extent. So we want to put um, our heavy infantry that we have the most of probably under him. However, this guy has no archers. I don't want him getting routed because he has no archers. And I also, you also want the middle flank. You really want them, you don't want them to fall. They can do a ton of damage when they're flanking. If this flank can kill their middle flank, I mean, that's kind of what you're going for. So the thought process is I could move the heavy infantry over here and he'll use them very well. Or I can strengthen the center flank here and hopefully uh, deal with that. These, Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong one. That's him. These are our troops. Once again, back-to-back -back 
episodes and my brain is turned off and I should really stop. But it's so much fun. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm actually going to move him to the center and move this other guy to that flank. Because he doesn't have a leading the the center modifier that's like negative. None of these guys have one that's positive. And we don't want our Craven dude in the middle anyways. If You can also auto-balance. The game would say, hey, you should do this. I heartily disagree, and maybe I'm wrong. I'm using this these arrows to rearrange stuff. There we go. Very good. I like that. I like that a lot. I think this is going to be really, really good. We just need to get our morale up, and then we will just kill these bastards. Um, I'm just going to pause again real quick, select this army, and see how long it takes for them to get there. It's going to take them a while. I don't want him running away. I think I'm going to move him, move this to be more central. So, like, if he goes to the line, sir, he'd be too far away. But if I'm in Kildare, I can get to anywhere except for Oriole pretty quickly. Or if I'm in Bryphne, I can do the same. Or I can just come over here and sack Kildare while I wait for my morale to go up. A lot of options. If I sit on one of these two and I sack it, he won't be able to reinforce his troops. Not that he's reinforcing anyways. May 13, that's probably about the same. Actually, that might... Some of these counties can get to other counties quicker. I'm going to sit on Kildare. Hey, we won the war! And now the king is not... Uh, he's not preoccupied with his other war. So he can bring his troops over here. And the great thing is, despite us being able to join someone's war, be called into a war, and just not do anything, the AI tends to actually send troops if they say they're going to send troops, which is nice of them. Okay. Um, unfortunately, the castles always are hard to get through, even when you have a lot of troops. So I probably... I mean, I don't really want him to sack my castle. How quickly is he... Well, we might be able to pass him. He's got a head start on us. It might be close. If he sacks my castle, I'll lose some gold. But we might as well sit here while our morale goes up. I mean, it'll be up pretty soon. That's going to take forever. The battle is going to determine this war, to be honest. It's not going to be through sieging. This one battle is going to be, you know, probably like almost 50% war score, my guess is, if I beat him, since I'm defending against him. Oh. Is that this one? Yeah. So he lost a bunch of men. Well, maybe not a bunch. He lost 1% of his men. That hit hurt his morale? It doesn't look like it did. Can't mouse over and see their exact morale. So that's half of what they could have. Oops. Oh. Again. Good job. This is less gold this time. I really don't want the prestige hit. Um, we are losing <laughs> 11 gold per month. No, I'm not going to do it. I might need that, that one extra month. Just keep working on it, though. Okay, so we don't have time to dilly-dally. We're going to attack. You probably going to run? No? Oh, I paused. All right. I'm going to pause again real quick before we get there. So we can mouse over his army and see that he has about half his total troops. It doesn't say he's reinforcing, so he's that number's not going to go up. And we also see the makeup of his troops. He's only got 30 archers, 300 heavy infantry. I mean, it would. There's no way we don't just destroy him. We are the attackers. We destroyed that flank. It's still just in the skirmish phase. There's a melee phase over here. So we can see what they're doing. This is the Craven guy. But uh, he's getting plus, um, with his tactic, he's getting plus 180% to his archers and his heavy infantry. Uh, he's charging with cavalry and is actually getting quite a bit out of his cavalry. 
uh, over here. If you're curious, he's also using the feint tactic. The next tactic, we can see the odds of him choosing a particular tactic because his uh, martial skill is so high, he has a good, a much higher chance of choosing the correct tactic. And this guy, we can see that he's losing quite a bit of his archers and his horse archers to this harass tactic. But it is like cavalry is doing all right. But I mean, come on, yeah, they're dead. You're gonna die, and everyone's running away. They're in the pursuit phase. They're using the pursuit tactic. In 14 days, 100% chance they will continue to run away. Uh, unfortunately, they're slow advancing with those pikemen. Maybe that's just old. Um, but we get a bonus damage for charge of opportunity for chasing after them. Average flank damage, 11 per soldier in day. I mean, it's kind of interesting. I don't know 100% of what all that is. And only 24%. That's surprising. What is going on here? Interesting. Very interesting. So, bastard. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I, I can tell you what I thought happened. <laughs> because my brain stopped working. So this is our buddy. He's just sieging. Instead of going and helping with the battle, or sieging that guy's capital, he's sieging... Oh, maybe this is his capital. Where's your capital? No, it's got to be where his shield is. His main title is the County of Kildare. So, he's just sieging his lands to help with the war score. What I thought happened, what can happen sometimes, if someone had a claim over here, see, he said the Duke, I wasn't thinking the King, but it's one of his vassals or whatever. If someone had a claim on this land, he may not want to attack it because he would be attacking the liege of the land, which would be the duke. However, when he split off and declared war on me, now he's in, he's considered an independent ruler. He's not under me anymore because we're at war. See how the lines? He's got these two counties. He He's not part of this county here. We're at war. So that's an opportunity when, especially when most of his army is gone, is if someone had a claim over here, they could come over and try to grab this county and get him to 100% and peace out and win that war before I finish my war with him and then that other war would end inconclusively. But if he could do it faster, if he could get to 100% faster, he could steal that land out from underneath me. He would get it from that guy, but when his lands came back to me after the land was over, that wouldn't be there anymore. So that's what I thought was happening. Um, it's not happening. The odds of that happening in Ireland are pretty slim. I forgot to chase him. I really thought we'd get more war score from that battle. So what he's doing now, I paused again, is he has more than 10 times the amount of defenders. He has more than 10 times attackers than this guy has defenders. So he's just sieging. He's just climbing over the walls and killing them. It's a very safe thing to do when you, and I've mentioned this before, I think in one of the other videos, uh, for that first war we were in. It's very safe when you have 10 times the troops. Um, it's about a, it's a toss-up if you have 5 times the troop based on this fort level and various other things. The makeup of your troops. Archers tend to be better at, at uh, assaulting. Just so he's, he's going to push this over real quick. I kind of wish he wasn't doing this. I'd rather not destroy... Well, actually, it's... I'm going to get one of these counties at the end of this. I'll take... And I kind of wanted to take Leinster because then I could make that duchy if I could get Ossery. So he's he's weakening those. Um, he's gonna if he gets like through them, he's gonna take my vassal's land, uh, my vassal's money. Uh, obviously, it all comes back to me at the end, but not that money that he gets for getting through those holdings. So that should wipe that army out, I believe. Uh, just a little bit of war score. We're getting a little press, or actually, never, we're not because we're not fighting in it. Never mind. We're getting a little tiny bit of technology. His army is gone, which is great, and we're in both of his counties sieging. I am not going to assault because I'm not even close to having enough men. But great, so he got through in Leinster. 
See? King of England has this castle. He's now attacking Ferns, this bishopric. Uh, he probably won't assault for two reasons. One, because it's not quite ten times the men. But also, these fall so much faster. 30%, I mean, three months, it's gone. And it's based on that fort level of just one. Same here, the city will fall really quickly. It just takes a while getting through those castles with their fort level. Uh, we might piece out of this by the time I, I won't even be able to get through his holding probably, which is a shame. I want to get through his holding, and I don't have to accept peace. I can, I can just keep on assaulting until I'm done. But we have mercenaries, and I don't want to pay to keep them up. We'll get money. And the interesting thing is, we could assault with our mercenaries. We still probably wouldn't want to do it with just three times the troops. But even at five, I might do it for two reasons. One, they're not my troops. I don't care if they die. Some of them are, but mostly the mercenaries will die. Two, if we mouse over, we see we're re reinforcing 27 soldiers per month. The mercenaries reinforce, so they'll come back. As long as they don't all die. Thirdly, they cost less the less mercenaries there are. We pay less to them because there's less soldiers. We pay basically per soldier. So you can see we're even losing less money per month now because we lost some in the battle. So if we couldn't afford to keep them at the number they were at now, so he wants the peace. I'm going to pause it real quick. Actually, I'm just going to let it go. We're going to siege through this. Oh, but I don't want to siege through these. Oh, I don't know what to do. But anyways, if we want to pay less for our mercenaries, and we thought we could kill off a lot of them, but not all of them, you know, we could do that instead of disbanding them. And they cost us less, but we'd be able to keep our, our numbers. Um, is your wife pregnant yet? Probably not. So let's look at the terms of peace. Uh, he will lose a bunch of prestige, and we will gain prestige. Not all of it, once again. Not the full 100, I think it would have been, because the king is helping. So our, the prestige we get will go down the more the king helps, which will be sieging through these things. Um, and, and since he's rebelled, we should be able to just throw him in jail and revoke a county. It doesn't say he will, he will be in prison. We won't automatically get him in jail, I don't think. It should say that, if that was the case. So what I'm going to do, I am going to accept his his terms because I want the prestige. This will put us over 200, which is nice, right? Yeah. Cool. We won our war. I honestly, I was I was slightly concerned at first whether we would. Oh, and he does automatically get in prison. Good. I thought it would say it. It should have, I think. But fine. Even if his wife is secretly pregnant, we can probably kill her if we need to. Awesome. So the king will leave. I will disband unit. This is going to lower mine. Uh, the army of Wiglaf, because he's leading the army, will stand down. The retinue troops will not. Special event troops will not. Okay. But our mercenaries did. They weren't considered special event troops. Which is fine. Because we wanted that. So, now that we have him... Oh, assuming Crown Law lets us. Either way, we just wait for him to die, and we become heir. We get his stuff. Nope. Good. We can revoke. We can revoke one of his titles. I mean, we could have done this possibly anyways, but normally it would say that this is considered tyrannical, So, and your vassals will all hate you for doing it. Everybody will. However, since he's a traitor, he, he rebelled against me, our vassals will not object. He won't like it. But so we'll take one of these now. Um, I'm going to take Leinster because I right away because I want to try the next time he fabricates a claim. I want Osri, and we'll make that duchy. The other idea is take Kildare. It's all within the same duchy, but um, no, I want to expand duchies. And I might be able to plot to take Kildare now anyways. And he won't be able to do anything about it because he's in prison. Remember, he just lost a lot of prestige. So he's at negative over 200 prestige. He's also in jail, which hurts his diplomacy and his health. Negative 10 diplomacy. He has zero diplomacy. He may complain soon about 
being in jail, and I can make it even worse on him and pretty much guarantee that he will never do anything again and will probably die soon. So, um, sorry, I lost where we were. You know, if we let the time go a little bit, it should tell us that we could revoke a, a county, but it's not. And I missed my chance to have a darn feast. Ugh. Oh, well, it's not as necessary now. We can look at our vassals. Um, oh, how did you get in prison? Did we capture you in a battle and it didn't tell me? Um, yeah. Well, I didn't mean to imprison you. Interesting. Weren't you really good at something? You were the spy master for my dad? Is that it? Uh, your stats are really bad, though. I mean, not your stats, your characteristics, your traits. Huh. I actually don't know. I might be saying the wrong terms for some of this stuff. I just use the words that make sense to me. So we can always look at intrigue and see who's in our dungeons. So... I'm sorry. <laughs> oh! I was on his deal. His He's imprisoned. His, his mayor. That's his opinion of his liege. Very odd. Why did you do that? Because he was... He was loyal to me, probably? I don't know, it doesn't tell us why he threw him in prison. I wish you we would know that. Okay, anyways, let's go back to conduct diplomacy. Let's take Leinster from him. Send. And now we own Leinster. So, get out of this screen. We can click, and now they're both bright green. We have this. He still owns this. We can't revoke this as well. So this is what it normally says. It costs us prestige. It'll lower his opinion of us, and every vassal of ours will hate us by 20 because it's considered tyrannical, basically. But he's still in our prison. We could release him from prison. That will show mercy, and everyone will like us 10 more. We can execute him, which is tyrannical. It's not as bad as revoking another county, and we get it anyways. It's only negative 10. But I don't want to be known as a tyrant. We can banish him. That's very tyrannical. We get his gold and all of his titles. We can ransom him to himself. He doesn't have 70 gold, so he wouldn't be able to ransom himself. Uh, yeah. And that's it. We could give him gold, so he had enough gold to ransom himself. If we want, if he was close. But he's not even close. As you can tell, my voice is starting to go. Where are we at? We're at 23 minutes. Um, what I want to see... Brown, huh? So this shows what he could do to us. Why he could um, declare war against us. He could declare war based on independence or to de de depose his liege. Those are his causes belli. His reasons for war. Let's see if we have a better way to revoke his county now that he's in jail. Yeah, look at the plot power we have. He's in our jail. We can take that. No sweat. You know what? We will. Uh, and even these people will join. Now the interesting thing, to get people to join, and we do need people to join in order to do this plot. Now, despite us having good plot power, we can't just choose to revoke it because we need basically his vassals to agree to help revoke uh, this county. So what we can do, and I think we need at least two, so this is perfect. What normally you used to have to do is you had to look at this thing and click on each person and invite them to plot. It automatically chooses it when you click on them, but you'd have to invite them to plot one, one by one. Uh, now they have this auto invite to plot thing, which is awesome. You click this, and you don't get the pop-ups or anything. So here, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it one at a time. We'll see what happens when we do it. This was the old school way. You can still do this, and it takes some time. Either way, it takes some time. This will be the last thing we do in this episode. But it's good to know. Plots are kind of fun. I'm speed up a little bit. We're still at two. Ding ding. Uh, well, apparently by default now, it doesn't tell you when people agree to join your plots. Or it just hasn't fired yet. 
What happened? He's not showing green as backed or... Oh, now they're all saying no. What changed? Oh, I'm going to have to bribe you people. Well, we'll just wait till we can have a feast. I'm not in a hurry. The guy dies, he dies, and I get his land. Okay. Well, apparently something changed, and he's no longer willing to come to my plot. You know what? Go away, then. Well, whatever. I don't like that he knows about it. Sometimes they tell the plots. Uh, it's not like a murder plot, but still. We'll just cancel it for now. Yeah, we'll just wait until we have a... Um, until we can boost our diplomacy with the feast. Of course, I say that, and then if we die... Well, we'll still be the heir. It won't matter. Uh, just make sure that his wife didn't have a baby. She's not pregnant. Good. Okay, so we're going to end the episode here. Uh, that was kind of fun. We had a war. We got We got our lands back. And we've imprisoned what was technically probably the better brother, but we're, uh, yeah, he's going to die in my dungeons. I'm not letting him out. He's just too dangerous. And, uh, great. Who knew? This is why you don't save scum. This has been kind of interesting. So please come on back if you find this interesting and you're learning. Uh, feel free to give me some, uh, give me some feedback, comments, whatever. I look forward to hearing those sorts of things. I do read all the comments. Not that there is a lot of them right now, but hey, I do look at my other videos. I respond to them as well. And uh, just thanks a lot for watching. I will see you all later.